Hello everyone, happy Friday, happy weekend. It's time for a bonus live video. Um, today is Friday, March 5th, and I am here to show you some more fun projects using the Butterfly Brilliance Bundle. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And this evening I have three projects to share with you that feature some fun techniques with the Butterfly Brilliance Bundle. Now, earlier this week on Tuesday, I showed you some projects that featured the gorgeous Butterfly Bijou DSP and the Butterfly Brilliance dies, but tonight I'm all about the stamp set. So, are you ready to do some stamping and see some cute projects? I hope so. I'm going to flip the video or flip the camera, so look away and then I'll get all, all set up and then I'll tell you when to look, okay? I'll be right back. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, now, as we're getting going here, let me just pull my video up on my iPad so I can see who's joining me tonight. Who is hanging out with me on a Friday? I see Susan and Anne. Hello, ladies, how are you? Hi, Helen. Wendy, nice to see you. Hi, Gail. Hi, Sue. Hope you guys are all well. Hope you've had a good end of the week and have some awesome weekend plans. It is freezing in my studio right now, so... If I'm if I'm rubbing my hands, it's because they're frozen. Anyhow, let's get to it. So Butterfly Brilliance is the bundle we are focusing on. This just went live on Tuesday of this week. Um, it is a sneak peek from the upcoming annual catalog. So it is available now, but it will also be available in the new annual, which goes live beginning of May. May the 4th. Be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to remember the date of the catalog launch this year. Um, so this bundle is priced at $74.50 here in Canada. And let me show you up close and personal what is included. So we get this awesome Butterfly Brilliance background stamp. It is a single stamp. We're going to see it in action several times this evening. And then, of course, we have the coordinating dies. So this is a huge set of dies. We have this one large die that cuts out the stamped background and it gives you six individual butterflies, which is just fantastic. One run through the machine, six die cut butterflies. Gotta love it. And then of course we have these gorgeous coordinating detailed dies. Now I forgot to mention on Monday, these dies actually, um, they fit over top of the solid dies. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay these on here so you can see how that looks. So you can actually layer the solid die cut butterfly with the detailed butterfly, which I love, love, love. So that is the dies. Um, we're gonna be using some of these detailed dies tonight. So you're gonna see them in action. We're also gonna use these little bitty um, solid butterflies. So you'll see those as well. All right, so let's get to it. I'm gonna make some space here. Now, the first card that we're going to make is this one. So this is one I posted earlier today, and it uses a really simple um, technique that is fantastic for newer stampers called spotlighting. So normally when we stamp um, an image that has line art, we typically would color the entire image. And I have lots of people who tell me they don't like to color. I don't understand that, but to each their own. So a great way to just add a little pop of color to this gorgeous butterfly image is to highlight just one and color just one. Uh, and we call that spotlighting because our eye immediately is drawn to that colored butterfly. So let me show you how to do this. So we're going to use this big background stamp and I like to use, whenever I have large background stamps like this, I like to use my Stamparatus. Um, it's just makes it super easy to maneuver these big stamps. I don't have to worry about my big giant block. It just makes it really simple. Now, I've got all kinds of crud. I should probably clean off this stamp because I was playing with this stamp so much this week and I got lots of stuff on it. I've got some gold leafing on here. You're gonna see that on one of the projects tonight too. Let me just give that a good wipe to make sure all that leafing is off and we're gonna get to it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is stamp our background. So our card base on this, I'm not sure how well it shows, but we've added just really subtle texture to the Magenta Madness background with tone on tone stamping. So my background panel, or my, sorry, my card base is, uh, hang on, let me grab my trimmer because I forgot to score this guy. Um, it is five and a half by eight and a half inches. Okay, now I'm going to score it at four and a quarter and that will give me my card base. And then we're gonna fold in half along our score line. 
Okay, so we're just gonna give that a fold. Okay, and then I'm gonna lay this down onto my Stamparatus platform. I've got a piece of our um, small grid paper on here to protect my um, platform so I don't get ink all over it. And I'm going to lay this down in such a way that I'm only stamping sort of on the right side of my um, card base. So I'm just going to lay my magnet right about there. I'm just going to close this to make sure that's going to give me what I want. That looks good. So we're going to ink up our stamp with... Oh, Jen, you like coloring with the blend. So do I. I will 100% agree. I color a lot more. Uh, now that the blends are a part of our lineup, um, I love them, mainly because I can just stamp on regular cardstock. I don't need to use specialty paper. That's the main draw of the blends for me. Okay, so I've inked up my butterfly stamp with Magenta Madness ink. I'm just going to close my Stamparatus and make sure I get a really nice image. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Just look at how pretty that tone on tone stamping is. I love it. So gorgeous. All right, now I need to give this a quick wipe because we are going to stamp again with our butterflies, but this time in black. Now the image, or the images, I guess, on these butterflies almost look like um, a pencil sketch. And I really love the softness of them. And so for that reason, I decided not to use my blends. I actually used watercolor pencils because I wanted to kind of be true to that sort of sketched, pencil sketch um, look of the images. So to start, I have, maybe I don't, yes I do. I have a piece of basic white cardstock. Now this is a, um, it's a half sheet. So it's five and a half by eight and a half. When I'm stamping this large butterfly image, I like to use a full sheet like this for a couple of reasons. One is that it gives me a place to put my magnet, <laughs> okay? It gives me something, some place to put my magnet that's not going to get in the way of my stamp. And secondly, it gives me lots of options for which orientation I cut my butterflies. So for this card, I want it to be a horizontal orientation. So by having the full five and a half inch width here, I have some options, okay? So I'm going to take my black ink and I'm going to ink up my butterflies. Now, just a little tip, if you are using the Stamparatus, um, you wanna put something, I like to use the empty stamp case, right under my plate, and that allows me to ink my stamp without the plate being at an angle. Okay, it keeps it nice and flat, which makes it easier to ink my stamps. Okay, so we're just gonna ink these guys up. I just got ink all over my fingers. That always happens to me when I'm inking on the Stamparatus. So we're going to close it up again and we're going to stamp our butterflies. And again, we just want to apply even pressure to make sure we get a nice crisp image. Look at how gorgeous that is. I missed the little tip of that butterfly's wing there. Oh, I don't think I got enough ink on it. And again, the beauty of the Stamparatus is that I can add a little more ink and come back and stamp again. And look at that fix my missing image there. Oh, I missed a little bit at the bottom of this guy, but I think, no, actually we're going to, we're going to re-ink that. Just make sure we get that bottom butterfly. And that may be an issue with the magnet. Let's just see if we can get that. There we go. That's better. Okay. So that looks really good. We're going to get this out of the way now. We will bring that back. Actually, I think we're done with that for now. So we'll set that over there. And now we're going to cut down this piece. Now I can pick and choose um, what size I want um, or what part of this piece I want to use. This piece is three and I have to measure this again because I forget. It's three and three quarters by five, I believe. Yes, three and three quarters by five. Now I actually left this a little bit long. It's actually five and a quarter and then I, I tore it because I wanted just that sort of torn detail on the edge. So we are going to cut this down to three and three quarters. So I'm going to cut it. Well, let's start right about there because I want this butterfly to be the one that I spotlight. So we're going to cut. I just like to start cutting it down and kind of work my way to the width that I want. So we've got that. Okay, let's go to three and three quarters here. Do I want to cut off that much? Nope. I'm going to go to four. We'll cut that and then again bring it back around and bring it down to three and three quarters. Again, keeping in mind that I want that butterfly to be my focal image. 
All right, so that looks good. Now I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this edge because I only want this to be five and a quarter inches, right? So we're gonna cut that here. Whoops, that was the scoring blade. That's not the one I want. All right, that looks good. Okay, let's get that out of the way. And now we're going to tear off, see this white space? I didn't really love that. So we're gonna tear that off. We do not need it. Again, I just wanna take care not to tear this butterfly because that is my focal image. So there we go. There is our beautiful butterfly piece. All right, so that now is ready to get glued onto our background panel. First, we're going to add a little bit of this awesome black and white striped Love You Always designer series paper. This is cut to two and a half, two and a half by four and a quarter. So it's gonna fit right along that left edge of our card base. So we're gonna go ahead and glue that guy on. Hi, Martine. Hi, Louise. I love my Stamparatus. I use my Stamparatus for background images a lot. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we have a malfunctioning seal. Let's swap this one out. Get this one going. There we go. All right, let's get this glued down. Um, I find the Stamparatus is great for using um, background stamps because I don't have to use that big heavy block. Um, I find it really, really handy and it's great for doing touch-ups like I did here. Remember how we didn't have that little bit? So I just added a little more ink and stamped again, which is a great feature. All right, so I have my background piece on. I'm going to add just, a, this is a half width of the silver mesh ribbon. Now this was in the holiday mini and it has carried over. It's going to be in the new annual. So we're going to add a little bit of seal along that torn edge and then we're just going to lay that mesh along there. I just like that little hint of silver peeking out. Okay, now that's gonna go on the front of our card and it's gonna get popped up. And I kind of feel like this needs to be torn or cut a little bit shorter. I'm gonna cut a little bit more off that because it feels like it's just a little too long yet. Let's take off, I don't know, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that's much better. All right, we're gonna go with that. Okay, so we're gonna add a couple of dimensionals to the back of this. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm doing nine. Yes, I'm sorry, all of you who like to conserve your dimensionals, but it's a big piece. We need lots of dimensionals to keep it from squishing. All right, we'll get rid of all our backings here. That's okay, Judith. I'm glad you could join us. Putting away laundry is just one of those realities of life. <laughs> Sad that it wasn't. It is, but it, it just is a fact. So we're going to pop that on to the front of our card. Okay. And then we're going to do a little coloring on our butterfly. So I had um, stamped and die cut this ahead of time. And I have my um, watercolor pencil. So I'm going to be using Melon Mambo, Rich Razzleberry, and Gorgeous Grape. Okay, then I have basic gray, which I'm going to use on the body, and then I have a blender pen. Now, keep in mind that I stamp this just on regular basic white cardstock, okay? So that's an important thing to keep in mind because when we're blending, we don't want to blend too much because this cardstock will pill if you overdo it, okay? It is not really, um, it's not like watercolor paper or shimmery white that has a lot of um, resistance to moisture. Now a couple of tips about using your watercolor pencils. Um, you want to work with a dull tip, okay? Um, if you were one of those kids, I used to love getting new pencil crayons on the first day of school or just at the start of the school year every year and I always made sure they were sharpened to like a needle point <laughs> because that was how I liked my pencil crayons. But if you are using watercolor pencil, pencils, you want to keep your tips dull because it makes it easier to blend and get even shading. So I've just laid down um, some Melon Mambo and then I'm just gonna color this little bit here. I'm, I'm adding a little bit of Rich Razzleberry there. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring in my Gorgeous Grape and we're going to add just along the top of the wing little hint of, hint of gorgeous grape and then I'm basically just going along the edge where the shadow is so I'm kind of following the image on the stamp so I'm just going to come around here and add the gorgeous grape around the edge just like that 
okay? And then just a little bit sort of at the join of the wing here. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite wing. So we're gonna color this. Actually, I think I'll just color the entire butterfly for now because we are gonna add shading. So let's just color this whole thing in. So again, this is the Flirty Flamingo. Not, no, it's not Melon Mambo. Not Flirty Flamingo, Melon Mambo. I wanted to get to something that was close to Magenta Madness because of course we don't have a Magenta Madness uh, watercolor pencil. So I played around with blending and adding layers of color and I got to something that was pretty close. So we're just gonna finish coloring this guy in. Again, I'm using a really nice dull tip on my pencil. Okay, this part that I've already colored, I'm actually gonna go over again. I'm gonna color over the entire thing with my Melon Mambo, okay? Then I'm gonna come back with my Gorgeous Grape and I'm going to come down along the edge of the wing Again, where that shading is. And I'm going to do this little bit here at the bottom. Also in the gorgeous grape. Okay. And then same thing on this wing. We're going to add our gorgeous grape here. Sorry I didn't do this ahead of time, you guys. But I honestly thought it might be good for you to see watercolor pencils in action. Because I don't use them very often. And I'm betting some of you have them and haven't pulled them out in quite some time. So I thought this might inspire you this weekend to pull out your watercolor pencils and have a good play with them. So again, I'm just adding that gorgeous grape all the way around sort of the perimeter of the wing. Get this bit here. And then across the top like this. And then I'm gonna come in with my Razzleberry and fill in this little spot here. Okay, and then again, I'm going to go over the entire thing with my Flirty Flamingo. No, it's not. Melon Mambo, why do I keep saying Flirty Flamingo? I've got Flirty Flamingo on the brain tonight for some reason. So I'm going over the entire thing again with the Melon Mambo. Doesn't look like much right now, I know. Give me a minute. <laughs> okay, now we're going to come in with our blender pen. So for those who have never used our blender pens before, they're essentially like um, a clear marker. So it has a blending um, solution inside of it and it picks up whatever color you apply it to. So I'm just going to take my blender pen and I'm gonna start kind of over the purple, over the gorgeous grape and pull it inwards. And you see how it's just blending with the Flirty Flamingo and it's turning into Magenta Madness. Look at that, who knew? Right? Gorgeous grape plus uh, Melon Mambo equals Magenta Madness. Okay, so again, I want to make sure I'm not spending too much time blending because I will pill my paper if I, if I do too much. So I'm just going quickly over top to blend in those colors. And look at the difference. There's a wing that's blended, there's one that isn't. Okay, such an amazing difference when you pull out that blender pen and pull those colors together. So cool. It's kind of magical actually when you get this thing out and you pull these colors, like it doesn't look like anything at all until you blend them out. Isn't that pretty? So, so amazing. All right, so now we're gonna add just a little bit more color to the body. So I'm gonna bring out my basic gray and again, I wanna keep that same sort of pencil sketch look. So I'm not adding a ton of color, but just kind of filling in some of the white space so it looks a little bit more solid. And that's it. Isn't that pretty? So, so pretty. All right, so now we're ready to add our butterfly and we're going to spot like this. So we wanna put it right over top of this image, the black and white image, to draw the eye. So we're gonna bend our wings a little bit. So it looks like our butterfly is just about to flutter right off the page. We'll add a couple of mini dimensionals here. Hi, Jill, how are you? And we're just gonna pop that right on over top. Okay, look at that. See how the shadow, it looks like a shadow. It's sort of lifting off the page. 
And then we're going to do a little flicky flicky with our winky winky. Now this is a new wink, so it's quite juicy. I'm just going to give this a little bit more of a burnish so that it lays flatter. So first thing I'm going to do is just take and add some shimmer to the wings of my butterfly. And again, this actually helps to blend the colors a little bit more too. You, did you know you can watercolor with your wink? You can. It does pick up the color. All right, then I'm going to just squeeze my barrel just a little bit to make sure I've got lots of ink in my brush. And I'm just gonna do a little flick across the front of my card. And I'm not sure how well that shows up. Can you guys see the little, little spatter? Love it, so pretty. And then the last touch I have ahead of time, heat embossed in white, this thank you. This is from the um, Sweet Ice Cream stamp set. Um, so it's heat embossed in white on black cardstock and then I fussy cut it out. And we're just gonna pop this up on the front of our card. And I love having the white against black because it really makes the sentiment stand out against that black and white background. So we're just gonna tuck that in right about there. And there you go. Isn't that pretty? Super simple. Now on the inside of my sample, I stamped some more black and white butterflies just on a panel of Whisper White so I've got some space to write a message. All right, you like that one? I hope so. That's number one, done. So spotlighting technique. All right, next one is this one. Now this one is quite magical and it's quite involved. So I've done a whole bunch of steps ahead of time because I didn't want to be here all night with you guys. Not that I don't enjoy hanging out with you. I just didn't want, I figured you might have other things you need to do on a Friday night. So this butterfly, I'm not sure how well it shows on the camera. Let me see if I can catch the light. It is um, clear embossed so that it's actually, it's clear embossed with three layers of embossing. And I can't actually show you how to do this because I used up almost all of my clear embossing powder doing this deck but I will explain how it's done so let me pull out I so I did an entire sheet so I stamped um, just like we did on our background stamp here I stamped the entire um, sheet of six butterflies and then I added my gold leafing so these are all die cut I cut, die cut them all at once um, what I did, let me explain. So I started with Highland Heather and then I took my sponge dauber and just randomly daubed on some pretty peacock ink. And I love that color combination. Once that was done, then I took and randomly again, daubed on some Versamark and stamped right over top using my Stamparatus and then added some heat and stick powder and then my gold leafing. Now, one day I'm going to do a video with the gold leafing. Not today, because it makes a, it makes a total mess. Um, it's fine, it's, don't get me wrong, it's a great mess. But when I do gold leafing, all of the cards are gonna be gold leafed <laughs> that day. So stay tuned, it's coming. In any case, I added my gold leafing, okay? And then I took my Versamark and I covered the entire surface, just with the pad of the Versamark all over and sprinkled on clear embossing powder. I heat embossed, repeat, more Versamark, more clear powder, heated, again for a third time. So what I end up with is a really thick layer of clear embossing and it looks almost like the gold leafing is embedded in the clear embossing. It's a really, really cool look. So as I said, that's quite involved. It took, it took me, I don't know, probably about half an hour to get these butterflies looking the way they do, but honestly, it's so worth the effort. And when you can, when you can do an entire sheet at a time, You've got all these extra butterflies to use on other projects, right? So I'm gonna, we're gonna put this card together. Uh, we're gonna use one of the smaller butterflies. I've already used the large one on this one, but first we're gonna do a little bit of sponging. Gotta get the right kit here. We're going to do a little bit of blending, I should say, with the Highland Tether and Gorgeous Grape. All right. So I have here a basic white panel. It's five and a quarter by four inches. Okay, I've embossed it using the painted texture embossing folder. Now this one is currently on back order. It's due in very soon, like next week soon, I think. Um, so I'm gonna place this landscape and I'm gonna start with my Highland Heather and I have my blending brush and I'm gonna start down in my bottom right corner and I'm just gonna come on to my cardstock. And again, I'm basically doing this corner on a diagonal. I don't need to get the entire surface, 
but I do want to get a nice, rich, not rich, a nice, subtle um, purple background. And what I love about this painted texture folder when you apply ink with the blending brush is that it catches the raised um, texture and just makes it pop like crazy. I think it looks amazing. So we're just going to add that subtle bit of texture with the Highland Heather. Get that nice and even. Okay, and then we're going to bring in our gorgeous grape. So the gorgeous grape is a little bit stronger purple. So it's going to really accent those raised um, parts of the cardstock from the embossing. Isn't that pretty? Oh, love playing with these blending brushes. Honestly, I could play with them on every project. You might get tired of watching me, but okay. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, so pretty. All right. So that is it for that. Now we're going to add a little bit more texture to this. Similar to what we did with the Wink of Stella on the last card, but this time I want it to be a little bit stronger. So I'm using some champagne mist um, glitter paint or glitter shimmer paint, not glitter paint, shimmer paint, and my um, aqua painter. So I'm going to take and flick a little bit of this and you're gonna see, I'm, I hope that it shows on the camera, that you're going to get stronger, larger droplets and they're, they're just a little bit bolder than on the last card. All right, so that's our background. We're gonna set that aside. It's gonna need a minute or two to dry. And I'm gonna pull in the other pieces. So here I have a stitch circle. It's die cut from some of that gorgeous Butterfly Bijou DSP. And I have my little label. This is cut using the potted succulents die. That's one of the labels from that die set. So I'm going to stamp my thank you in Pretty Peacock ink, and I'm going to stamp it towards the left end of my little label here. So I'm going to put this hopefully where I can get it relatively straight. So we'll stamp that there. Not bad. And we are going to add a the next size up butterfly. So it's not going to be quite as large as this one. In fact, we could, or we could do, do I do two butterflies? No, I think I like one. I think the one is, is it draws the eye. Yeah, let's do one. All right, so we are going to add a little bit of gold cord. As soon as I find what I did with it. There it is, it's hiding under my ink pad. We're gonna add a little bit of gold cord to our um, circle here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of seal down on my circle. I'm gonna grab my cord and I'm gonna wrap it around my hand. So my four fingers, three or four times and then snip it off the roll. And then I'm basically just gonna kind of grab it, gather it in the middle and stick it to the seal that I put down. Okay, and then I can play around with my loops and kind of get them where I want them. Okay, I want my tails to kind of be trailing out to the sides. Okay, and my butterfly is gonna go on top just like that. Isn't that pretty? We'll fix up there our ends in a minute. First, I'm going to very carefully um, burnish my wings a little bit. I want them to curl a little bit. Now it's harder to burnish them because of all that clear embossing, right? It's got quite a few layers of embossing on there. I also don't wanna scrape off the gold leafing. So you wanna be gentle when you're doing that. So we're gonna add, do I have any more minis? Nope, I don't. There we go, there's more minis. So let's add a couple of mini dimensionals just along the body here. Get rid of our backings and we're gonna pop this on. Now I kind of want my butterfly going at an angle across my um, cord. Okay, then I'm gonna trim the tails a little bit and see how beautifully this one's frayed. I want this one to do the same thing. Doesn't take much to get this stuff to fray. It's such pretty. I love this stuff. I would like to hope that it's going to carry over <laughs> into the new catalog. I don't know if it will, uh, but I hope so. 
All right, so then we're going to add our label. So we're gonna do that before we glue this onto our background panel. So I'm gonna add a couple more dimensionals to the end of the label that is not stamped. Oh, I got an extra backing there. I got a two for one deal on the backings. Let's get rid of that. All right, so I want my butterfly to be at an angle. So I'm gonna turn my, rotate my butterfly on my circle to the angle that I want. And then I'm gonna do my best to get my thank you tucked in and have it be straight. So I'm basically using the grid lines to make sure my, my thank you is straight. Okay, so then that is just going to get transferred over to our background piece. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our circle. And again, we want to make sure our thank you is straight, right? The butterfly can be crooked, the thank you not so much. So we want to try and get that on so that it's nice and straight. And I do want it to go a little bit lower. There we go. Okay, now this has popped up, so I'm gonna add another, there's my dimensional that has no backing. So we're gonna just tuck that in. Grab that with my take your pick, and we're gonna tuck that in here so that that stays put just like that, okay? And then it's just a matter of gluing it onto our card base. So our card base is Highland Heather cardstock. It's five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll fold that in half along our score line and crisp it up. And then I'm actually gonna apply my adhesive directly to my card base this time. I don't often do that, but when I have a piece that has lots going on, um, I would rather not squish everything that's on there by flipping it over to add, add the adhesive. So we're just gonna put it right there. All right, so there is our card. And I'm gonna trim this little bit that's hanging over the edge because that's gonna bug me. So we'll get rid of that and maybe get trim those guys give these guys a little bit of a haircut there there we go and then the last touch is a bit of bling so I have some of my gilded gems here and we're gonna use what we'll use I think we're gonna use a medium so we'll put a medium one here and then we'll add a couple of smaller ones I'm using slightly smaller scale ones than I did on my original because it's a smaller butterfly right I don't want them to draw too much attention away from my butterfly but there we go. Isn't that pretty? You could make a whole series of these. Again, I've still got three more butterflies. I should have a fourth one because that die cuts. I'm not sure where the other one went. That die cuts six, right? Oh, you know where the other one went? I know where it is. It's on the inside of this card. That's my sample. I added that little bitty one on the inside. Okay, so how pretty would it be to use these three together on a card, right? Um, so the cool thing is as much work as it is to get them to look like this, once you run that die through and cut out six, then you've got lots to work with. All right. So that is number two. Clean my mess up here a little bit. And I'm going to bring in number three. Now I haven't done a slimline card in a long, long time. Um, I act, it was like Christmas before Christmas that I did a slim line last time. So we're going to do this one. And, uh, this is one again that I was reminded to do slim lines. I was watching a video by a friend of mine on, I can't remember what day it was. And she did a slim line and I was like, Oh, I need to do a slim line card. So here we go. All right. So I want to show you, remember how I said I, um, die cut all of those butterflies all at once. Remember that piece that we stamped? Um, the cool thing is when you use a big or like a half sheet of cardstock to stamp and die cut, then you have a mask that you can use and you want to have a larger piece so that it, you have something to hold on to. So there are lots of advantages. Don't throw out your negative because it makes a fantastic mask, which is what we're going to use on this card. So let me show you what we're going to do. So we are going to start with a piece of basic white cardstock. It is three and three eighths by eight and three eighths. Okay, my finished card is three and three quarters by eight and a half. All right, so I'm, I've got my piece. I'm gonna take and lay my mask. I just have to think about how I want this to look. So I am using, I wanna make sure I have these three butterflies because I've already die cut my detailed vellum butterflies to go over top. So let's position this in such a way that we are going to have most, if not all, of those images on our page when we mask it. And that looks pretty good, right about there, okay? 
So we're going to start with our um, Misty Moonlight. So I'm going to bring in my ink pad and my blending brush. And we are very, very quickly, like this is nothing fancy. We're not worrying about like trying to get this perfect at all. We're just going to take and very quickly um, add a little bit of ink inside of each of these butterflies. So I'm using my negative as a mask and I'm just gonna lay down ink really quickly. Okay, you do just wanna make sure that you're not getting too vigorous when you're sponging because you can move the mask, right? It's not sticky, so it's not adhered. I'm just holding it with my fingers. So you just wanna make sure you don't get too overzealous <laughs> when you're sponging. Um, the cool thing about these brushes is it's actually much easier to do this with the brushes than with, uh, say, a sponge dauber because they are a lighter touch. Um, so you won't get the same um, lift of the paper of your mask that you would get with sponge daubers or a Stampin' Sponge. So let's just apply. Oh, I got a little heavy handed there and that's okay. We're just going to apply a little bit of ink each one of these butterflies. Oh, it moved. See, this is why you want to be gentle. Let's just get that back in place there. Make sure it hasn't moved too far off track. Oh, moved again. I'm not doing a very good job of holding this tonight. That's probably enough with this color anyway. All right, let's get that put back into place and I'm gonna do a better job holding it with the next color. So we're done with the Misty Moonlight. Then I'm going to come in with my gorgeous grape. Was it, no, it wasn't. It was Highland Heather. Where'd my Highland Heather go? There it is. So we're going to pull in our Highland Heather. And again, we're just going to come on and we're going to add a little bit of the Highland Heather. And it's just going to add the subtlest bit of purple to our butterflies. Now you will get inky fingers doing this. There's no <laughs> avoiding that. It's just a fact of playing with ink. That's one of the fun things about doing techniques, right? They're a little bit messy, but messy is fun. Let's make sure that that's in the right spot. Get a little bit of this going. Got little bits of gold cords still <laughs> kicking around here. Blend that out. Okay, and then this little guy, this is the one that moved on me, so I'm going to be extra careful to so hold that in place. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Look at how pretty that is. All right, we're not done yet. I should have taken that off, but I wanted to show you how pretty it was. Okay, so now we're going to add these little spatters. Okay, so I need to keep my mask in place. I shouldn't have taken that off. I got over, over excited. So we're going to get that back into position. And the nice thing about this is, is it's fairly forgiving because these images are large. It's easy to get it back where it needs to be. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with my Wink of Snow. No, not my Wink of Stella. Well, I am using a Wink of Stella, but I'm using an old Wink of Stella. And I'll show you why in a sec. So I'm going to put this away and I'm going to come in, first of all, with my Misty Moonlight. So I'm going to take my Misty Moonlight ink pad and I'm going to squish the lid a little bit so that I get ink in the lid. Okay. Now this is an old Wink of Stella, meaning it's almost empty. Okay. You don't want to use a brand new one because your, your brush is going to get kind of nasty. Do you see how it's kind of all goopy and colored? So I'm going to take and pick up some of that color and I'm going to flick my Wink of Stella all over my mask and I'm going to get this gorgeous spatter texture on each one of my butterflies. We'll see how well this goes. This wink is pretty dry. I may need to pull in my aqua painter. The reason I use my wink is because I wanted it to have a little bit of shimmer as well. You could do this with an aqua painter just as easily, but by using the wink, I'm kind of getting a two for one where I'm getting um, shimmer and spatter. All right, that looks good. So there is my Misty Moonlight. 
All right, and then I'm just gonna clean that off a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my Gorgeous Grape. Okay, I'm using Gorgeous Grape instead of Highland Heather because I want it to be a little bit stronger. So again, I'm going to pick up some of my Gorgeous Grape and spatter that all over my little spongy, spongy butterflies. This one needs more up here. Oh, that's good. All right, that looks fantastic. Let's get the mask off and then we can really admire it. Here we go. Look at that. Is that not pretty? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, now we are going to add a little bit of texture. So this is the second technique. So we've done masking. We're also gonna do something called faux embossing. So do you see how I've added, it looks like it's an embossed raised texture here at the bottom and the top. It's actually not embossed because we don't have an embossing folder that looks like that. I'm actually using some of these adorable little bitty solid die cut butterflies. And I've cut them in white, so it's going to be white on white, which is what gives us that faux embossed look. So I have actually added a little bit of um, adhesive sheets to the back of these before I die cut them. We're just gonna make it really quick and easy to glue them down. So I'm just gonna get them placed. And again, in order for this to look like a truly embossed um, effect, we wanna make sure that some of our little guys are extending off the edge, okay? So once I've got them placed, I'm just gonna come in and peel off my backings and just pop these down where I want them. So one there. And get this backing off. This little guy. And yes, we did used to have a butterfly embossing folder, Louise. You are right. I bet you still have yours. <laughs> I do not keep retired items for the most part, unless it's something that I have a serious sentimental attachment to or something that I think I will use maybe on a scrapbook project at some point. But for the most part, my retired products go into my retired product sale, my BOGO sale, which will be coming up in June. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. It's a pretty popular event. Okay, we'll get this last little guy on just like that. Okay, and then we're going to add a few at the top as well. So we're going to add one kind of there and we'll add another big guy there. What else do we got? We got a little guy there and a little one up here. Do I have one more? I think that's it. That's okay. That's enough. All right. So let's get rid of these backings and we'll pop them on as well. So one there and one there. So by using the adhesive sheets, it makes this really, really quick. Um, it would be a big pain in the neck if I had to apply glue to each one of these little guys. But by turning them into stickers with the adhesive sheets, it goes pretty fast. Okay, so now I'm going to take my snips, wherever they are, and trim off the bits that are extending off the edge. So I'm just going to flip my cardstock over and use the edge of the panel as a guide. And just clean that up. Get rid of those little guys. Now they're gonna stick to my fingers. And one more. And then these guys up top. All right, that looks good. Isn't that pretty? Such a cool technique. All right, now we need to do a little bit of stamping. As soon as I figure out which one of these bins has my <laughs> stamp in it. It's a disaster zone in here tonight. All right, we're gonna keep these guys. I'm gonna get these guys out of the way. And we're gonna stamp our I Miss You just on this large butterfly. I thought it was kind of cool to use that silhouette of the butterfly to highlight my stamp sentiment. So I'm gonna stamp in Misty Moonlight. And I'm gonna have to move this a little closer to me. I'm hoping you guys can still see it, but I really wanna get this straight. <laughs> I do not wanna mess this up. <laughs> okay, that was good. All right, so that is my background. Now we're gonna add some of these gorgeous detailed vellum butterflies, okay? Um, now, actually, before we do that, let's put this on our card base. So our card base is Soft Sky cardstock, not Soft Sky. Oh my goodness, I'm dating myself. Seaside Spray. <laughs> 
Wowza, who remembers Soft Sky? Um, this is seven and a half by eight and a half inches. I've scored it in the middle of the seven and a half um, side at three and three quarters. Okay, so we're gonna fold that in half. Is this seven and a half or seven? It might be seven. Hang on, what are we here? Yeah, it's seven by eight and a half, not seven and a half. So it's scored at three and a half. I will put all the measurements up afterwards for you guys so you have them. Okay, and then my panel is going to fit on the front with just a narrow little border. You know me and my narrow borders. Oh, I see a little wing that's just a little smidge that's sticking out and that's going to bug me. So we'll get rid of that. All right, so let's add a little bit of adhesive to our panel. And when I have these long panels for from um, slimline cards, I like to just kind of work my way down. I find it easier to get it straight if I kind of just work it down rather than try to lay it all down at once. Okay. All right. So this is what gives us the real wow on this card, right? It's these beautiful vellum butterflies. Excuse me. So um, a tip. When you're cutting these vellum butterflies out, if you try to put this through just with a sheet of vellum through your machine, you're, it's not going to cut really well. Okay, so a tip for getting better quality cuts with your vellum is to put a piece of white, basic white cardstock or even copy paper behind the vellum when you run it through. Okay, I'm not sure why. You just get a better quality cut and um, these little, the little detail pieces just fall out. They basically stick to the cardstock and you lift your vellum butterfly out and you have no little bits to poke out. It's great. <laughs> okay, um, so we're going to add these. So this little guy is going to go here big one goes up there and then this little guy is going to go here okay so we're going to curl our wings a little bit you want to be really gentle when you're doing that with the, the vellum and then i'm going to take a glue dot and roll it into a little tube just with the nail of my thumb press my butterfly into it i'm actually going to use two because i kind of want a, like a little bit of glue right along the body of this of the butterfly okay so make sure that rolls it's not going to peek out and then I'm just going to sort of lay this detailed butterfly over top of my stenciled butterfly okay so there's one and then another one here yeah I hope they bring back seaside spray too Louise I in fact I'm seriously you're thinking of repainting my um, office upstairs in this color um i just love it and actually john and i were talking tonight because he is on a painting roll given that he's currently unemployed so i'm like well may as well get all those jobs done around the house that need to get done and painting is a big one so I, we were talking about what color to paint um the office and i was saying oh i've got this really beautiful because we've done a lot of grays um and some of the grays have a bluish tint so i think this color seas seaside spray would be perfect in there plus it's just such a soothing color all right so we've got our three vellum butterflies down and then i just kind of like to take my bone folder and just make sure that i squish down those glue dots so that they're really well adhered okay and then what really finishes this card is some of our silver metallic pearls um, these things actually almost look the same color as Seaside Spray when you layer them on top of the Seaside Spray. It's amazing how they kind of take on that color. So I'm just going to pick these up with my Take Your Pick. And I'm going to just create a body for my butterfly, preferably straight, with these little bitty pearls. And honestly, they are the wow factor. They just finish this card so beautifully. I just love it. So we're just gonna add these little guys. Seeing my finger rubbing the top of the paper repeatedly. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're saying there, Louise and, uh, and Judy. I'm not sure what you're talking about there. I am currently adding pearls to my butterflies. I'm a little confused. I'm hoping you're seeing, I'm seeing the video on my iPad and it looks good. So I'm hoping you guys are seeing what I'm doing here. So I'm just adding these little pearls just as my little finishing touch. 
And one more on this guy, and we're good. There we go. So let me move this up so you can see my sort of faux embossed look here. Okay, so we've got faux embossing and we've got stenciling on this card. Talk about lots of techniques tonight. I don't normally do this many, but honestly, I was having so much fun with this stamp set. I just kept going. <laughs> so there are our three projects. Let me bring them all back. So we've got one and two and three. All right, you guys, I hope you like those. I hope you have some fun with ink and techniques. These are simple techniques. None of them are really complex. This one was a little bit more involved just because of the many layers of embossing, but honestly not hard, just a little bit time consuming. But um, lots and lots of fun. This is such a fun um, suite, and I hope you give some of these techniques a try and have some time to play this weekend. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed these projects. Have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you on Tuesday for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.